Oh yes, the sweet sounds of AMA Supercross. But did you know it's carefully regulated? Stay with us in this video because we're going to catch up with AMA Chief Technical Inspector Tim McAdams who will explain to us the sound check process that these teams are subject to. We'll show you how it works, what the limit is on noise, and why the AMA has such a role. You'll see a lot of teams scrambling and changing silencers to try to get within the limits. Let's head back to the sound check. As you can see, for many of the teams, it takes several attempts and some changing of the silencers to get legal. We talked to a lot of the teams last year, and many of them said that this was an annoyance trying to pass this test, but coming up, we're gonna let you know why it exists and how this test could actually protect you as a rider. Here with Tim from the AMA. Tim, you are a busy man pre-race. I wanted to see. What's going on? I, I see you. You're hustling. Could you please explain this sound check system to me? So what we do is we sound check every bike on the track that's coming to wants to actually race in the Supercross race series. Um, and I'll just real quick explain why people often ask. You know, next week is going to have monster trucks in here, which are just ridiculously loud. However, why do we have a sound control on the, the bikes here? It's because there is a rule one for the sound control. Two, our purpose for the sound control is to get bikes to be quieter. We're pushing you to get a quieter bike so that it's not closing to local tracks, upsetting people that aren't racers, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the reason behind it. People don't seem to quite understand why we do it. And that's our reason for doing it. It's more about the environment around us and, and us to continue to be able to ride bikes without affecting the world. So our way of doing that is doing our share of basically trying to control our end of the program lead by example for lack of a better term do you know the limit on decibels yes the limit is 112 now <clears throat> it's one the limit is 112 db you get 2 db for the meat uh, for the uh, mister uh, the up and down adjustment of the meter so it's actually 114 and then we round down so it's actually our total is 115 they have to be 115 and less and i'm not sure if that confused things even more but the rule is 112 and then there's two for the meter and we round down. We see teams back there changing silencers. Yep. Is there a limit on how many times they can try to pass? No, we allow them to bring a couple up and do a couple initially, but we want to get through the line and get the other competitors through. If the team wants to do many, 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 we don't have a problem with it as long as it's not a line. How do you handle enforcement to make sure they are that same sound level on race day and they're running the same silencers that they were able to get through your We inspection? do random tests during practicing. So while they're practicing on the track, we'll actually physically pull bikes off the track and do an additional uh, post-practice inspection, post-race inspections, just to make sure they have not modified it or changed something out as we would do uh, create some sort of power or whatever. Do you know roughly when this started, this practice? The practice of sound control? Sound control. Oof. Does this go back years oh, and years? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, that I know for sure, 94, way before that though. Wow, so many, many years, yeah. Even it's, with it's the two strokes, we were doing yeah. this. Oh yeah, it's, uh, we've gotten more stringent about it in, in recent years. I would say uh, in the past 15 years, we've been more stringent about controlling it. Um, and there's been different various tests and it's gone from a certain amount level, uh, decibel level, we've actually tapered it down to this point. Um, 
I venture to guess at some point in time we'll get even a little bit lower. Now, from your standpoint, do you think it makes for a better spectator experience yes, when one bike's not? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's what I hear from a lot of people, especially the promoters, is when they're in the stands now, they can actually have a conversation with somebody, whereas in the past they couldn't. It was just too damn loud. I appreciate the insight, Tim. Yeah. I really do. Uh, what else are you busy with today? I know that there must be a ton of stuff you're looking for. <laughs> I couldn't even. I can't even begin to. A lot of the big problem, right? Our portion of what I'm doing right now is is the incoming of uh, homologation parts. So part of our rules is is a uh, uh, production homologation rule. Um, and what entailed in that rule is the manufacturers that, or any racers that race here have to have a production based bike. So the frame has to be production, the cases need to be production, the head and cylinder needs to be production, and the suspension needs to be production based. So uh, there's a bit of paperwork and part swapping on that goes on. That's what I was doing when, when you first showed up. It's got to be a tremendous amount of work to make sure everybody's on point. There's a tough, <laughs> there's a bit there. How many years have you been doing this? This is my 10th year. Do you love your job? Oh yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Anything you you'd like to add? Uh, go to the races. Appreciate it. Have a good season. All right, thanks. Well, there you have it. There's your explanation from the AMA. We want to know your thoughts in the comments. Is this worthwhile? Is this something the AMA should be doing or is this unnecessary? Does this help protect riders' rights? and keep the bikes quiet and improve. So the next time you attend an AMA Supercross race, know that that sound you hear is carefully created and carefully regulated. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on this process. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Wait a minute, is it the legendary Jesse James? Are you really the legendary Jesse James? Sometimes, only in my own mind. What do you got on your hat? Cycle drag. You're the man. Do you watch the Cycle Drag YouTube channel? No, but you should. <laughs> we hope that you'll start watching, and I appreciate it. Yep. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube, like CycleDrag.com on Facebook, and we'll keep it coming. We are here to promote fast motorcycles all over the world. If you have any friends who you think may enjoy this, please refer them. They are always welcome. Thank you for the comments, the feedback. We appreciate it, guys. Thank you for subscribing to Cycle Drag on YouTube.
For all things motorcycle performance, make sure you're subscribed to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Smash the bell for notifications. Like CycleDrag.com on Facebook, and we will keep it coming. If there's fast motorcycles there, we're in. Cycle Drag rolls on.